All right, let's now take a look at the third anomaly detection system, which is one class SVM. SVM, we've seen our support vector machines. And this one class SVM was developed by Schultkopf in about uh, 20 years ago, 99. Before we go into one class SVM, I just want to recap what SVM was. Remember SVM? What we tried to do is we wanted to separate the data by maximizing the margins between these two uh, classes. Yeah? Um, and then the, the vectors that would actually define that margin we call the support vectors. Another thing that was uh, interesting for what SVM is concerned is that it allowed us to deal with nonlinearities. How did we do that? Well, we use a kernel trick. If the data is not separable in the lower dimension space here, x, we would actually transform that data to a higher dimensional space, separate the data there, and calculate the support vectors. And then at the end, you would bring back uh, the data to the original space. Yeah? To give you a bit of intuition, here is a 2D scenario. Uh, I have a 2D uh, grid here. And I have two circles here and two crosses there. You know? I cannot separate these linearly you know, in, in that space. So what I do is I go to a third dimension here. So I add a dimension. And then it allows me to keep these two circles at the bottom. And I move the crosses up to the top. And now I can't find, can find the plane that separates the crosses and the circles. Another thing that we also remember from uh, SVM is that there were lots of parameters to trim. And we used grid search at the time. And uh, I think we all remember how much time it took for the computer to come up with something. You know, just because it's, it's heavy calculation. Um, so, one parameter to choose is the kernel. We have linear kernel, polynomial kernel, and uh, RBF, which is a radial base function. If we choose the radial base function, we have another parameter to choose from, which is gamma. And what is gamma? Well, gamma is based, if gamma is very high, yeah, you actually are able to go around all these circles here. Yeah, here we go. And this would be your boundary. This would be when gamma is high. When gamma is low, you basically have a more decisive boundary. Not, you know, turning every corner. You know? There was a third parameter that was C, and the default of C was 1. And C basically uh, trades off between maximizing the margin and having a perfect classifier. Yeah? If I give you an example here, and I put a point here in the middle, I can do two things. I can move this line here, but this will reduce my margin, or I could just live with it. Live with it, there is a, a sense of impurity or a soft margin on the on this plate. Yeah? So these were the parameters. Now one class is VM, actually there's not a lot that changes. And the only thing that changes is that your second class, your second class is going to be your origin. Is your second class. Yeah? And all the data will be your first class. And here you do exactly the same. You take your, your, uh, your base uh, scenario and you project it into higher dimension feature space. You look for your support vector there. Yeah? And then you come back to the original space. It's exactly the same. Now here, um, here as well, we have something similar to the C factor, but there is no C. Uh, so there is no C in uh, one class SVM, but we have a parameter called mu. Now let's call it mu. Mu replaces C in a way. And here I drew a point here. Yeah? So basically what we do is we choose a subspace S of H. Uh, this is your, your space H. And we will choose a subspace of H. And 
the probability that the test point is not an element of S must be smaller than mu, must be very small. Yeah. Um, so here again, mu is, is kind of replacing the epsilon that we saw in the beginning of this uh, session. Here you have a point that is very close to the origin. Now you have two choices. Yeah, you can make your margin very small and then it will actually capture that point. Or you could ignore this point yeah, and put your, uh, your other line here roughly. Yeah. So basically what you have is this, uh, this is your subspace S yeah, and here you have your subspace S bar and S, S bar are complement. Okay, so um, that's basically it. Yeah. Um, in our coding exercise we will use a linear or a polynomial kernel because I already tried with RBF and it takes a while. Yeah.